The first game console I ever played was the Nintendo Entertainment System somewhere back in the 90s. Many of those classic games from the NES have been revered over the years. Some few have been found as lesser known gems, and others have become noteworthy just because of how bad they were. We admired some of these games so much that developers made complete HD overhauls and re-released them. Along with the releases of remakes came other games that were new and original that just paid homage to these retro titles. How many are there? Quite a few now that I recall such games as the Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures, Broforce, Cave Story, and even Lone Survivor. Certainly last but not least were brought to the game under review, the much anticipated, oddly yet creatively named Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight began as a Kickstarter project by Yacht Club Games and it has amassed over $300,000 in donations. Basically, you're a knight with a shovel, fighting in a world where your best friend, Shield Knight, has been taken from you, and the land is in turmoil. It's not too far off of any other NES game concept we're used to, right? That is absolutely correct. And I'm going to come out and say this right now. I'm going to compare this game to a few other side-scrolling games we remember from the NES because it's pretty much the best way to explain Shovel Knight. To start, the first thing I noticed was the excellent conveyance shown in the intro level. The next thing I noticed was the ability to point the shovel down in air and bounce on an enemy. So there you have the first NES game comparison, DuckTales. Shovel Knight also features an item system much like that in Castlevania and Mega Man with the mix. To elaborate on this and make it seem a little less confusing, you use powers by hitting up an attack to the likes of Castlevania. These single abilities can be swapped out at will by hitting the select button and choosing your power like in Mega Man. Powers can seriously help in traversing the boards and challenges of all sorts akin to that of Super Mario Bros. 3. There are also many secrets to find and unlock, so keep an eye out for patterns that may lead to them. Shovel Knight also surprisingly has an incorporation of Zelda 2, the adventure Link with settlements. In settlements, you can intermingle with townsfolk to find side quests and even more surprises. And I have to admit, it's nice to not hear anyone say, I am error. But there is a frog that has some pretty awfully awesome puns. And also while in these towns you can buy HP upgrades, magic upgrades, armor, and shovel upgrades. These can be purchased with gems scattered around the land and the ground, in enemies, and in chests. Such gems can be gathered again and again through replays, but each time is just as rewarding as before and feels in no way made to extend the game by farming. I am looking at you, Castlevania 2. Shovel Knight runs at the smoothest it possibly could be, running at a surprising 60 frames a second. The controls are also very responsive, certainly rivaling that of the NES games in the past. The level designs are very comparable to all the games I already mentioned too. Castlevania, Mega Man, DuckTales, and Mario 3. Putting all this together in Shovel Knight makes it a perfect homage, or as Yacht Club Games said, a love letter to 8-bit games. The game also has bosses at the end of every stage, named like that of Mega Man, except with the word man, it is replaced with the word knight. King Knight, Spectre Knight, Plague Knight, uh, Fashion Knight? Well, you get it. The gameplay is really what made the NES games at the time, and certainly what this game also refers to. The aesthetics and sound and graphics may have been more of a primitive aspect of those games back then, but developers tried their best to make do with the 8-bit music and the 64 color palette. Of course, Shovel Knight isn't quite exact because it's made with better technology, but it is simulated close to perfection with the tile-colored levels and classically composed 8-bit music from Jake Kaufman. Yacht Club Games even went far enough to contract the legendary Mega Man composer, Miss Anami Matsume, to make a couple tracks too. With that, it's easy to hear where the music drives its influences from. Along with the audio aesthetics, the developers also did an incredible job making the color of each level pop out in compliments. Of course you know that it's made with better technology with the 1080p resolution and all, but you will certainly forget about all that when you have your newfound nostalgia for a game that just came out. The only bad thing about Shovel Knight, and this is a serious lack of it, scan lines. Come on, we've gotten so used to the CRTVs that we had back in the day, and it just looks weird without them. Alright, well we can't live in the past too long, even if our nostalgia is still a little bit hungry. Shovel Knight is a perfect amalgamation of all the irrefutably best NES titles such as Mega Man, Castlevania, Super Mario Bros. 3, and DuckTales. Amongst all the retro-esque games created in recent past, this is the closest emulation to the Nintendo we know and love for its time and nostalgia. Shovel Knight is a new game 
filled with the charm and fun of the past. It earns a 5 out of 5. You could say this is the newest NES game. And the great news is you can buy it on the Nintendo 3DS or the Wii U. Or Steam if you're part of the PC Master Race. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this review all the way through if you did. If you want to see another retro style game that may be a bit aggravating because it's pretty darn difficult, watch my review for the Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures right here. In the meantime, feel free to rate this video what you feel, comment what you think, and subscribe if you think it's worth. Thank you and have a good one.